You know, guys, so for what has been over a year now, we've been doing this podcast. I have been connecting the dots for a lot of people. I have been bringing on some amazing guests. And let me tell you the greatest thing, the greatest part of this whole thing for me has been when I get messages, voicemails, DMs, whatever it is, and somebody says to me, you know what? I got a new best friend in my college because of you. You know what? This guy, Whitebeard, he's the best guy I've ever met in my college. I hang out with him all the time. This guy, Natural State's amazing. This guy, Dirty South, you know, rest in peace. It was an amazing guy. I love how this platform has just brought people together. Um, it is, uh, I try not to get choked up. It, it is a really big deal for me. Um, I love seeing people connect. I love, uh, it's, it's been my style for a long time. Uh, all my friends, we, we share passions. That's kind of where my friendships come from. So to have you guys tell me that this podcast is like deepening and connecting everyone, uh, it, it's just the most gratifying thing in the world. So on that note, tonight is very special. Um, I have uh, teamed up with two good buddies. Uh, we had a transformative experience. We, we really clicked. And uh, just over time, we, we said we got to do this. It just, we just kept feeling like it's right. We, we absolutely have to do this. So tonight, I am going to bring on Don King, the Mushroom Hunter, and uh, Natural State Mycology. Both guys have been on the show before. Uh, they are my business partners in a new endeavor. Uh, we're calling Mycotrex. So we're going to go on some mushroom trips, guys, and I'm going to bring these guys on. We're going to talk about it. So without further ado, let me bring on Don King. What's up, man? How's it going? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm almost as excited as you are, man. Almost. I'm pretty, I'm pretty amped. I am yeah. like... I was working on that promo and just that music was just hitting. Oh my gosh. I was just ready to get back. Yes. Ready to get back. Yes. So, so let's do this. So just re real basic. We'll go into details here, guys, but the idea is simple. I'm, you know, we talk all the time on the show about how when you grow these mushrooms for the first time, either it just does something to you or it doesn't. When you see these mushrooms grow, it just somehow gets you. Or if you're out, you know, foraging for mushrooms, it's the same thing, man. Something, for some reason, the people in this community are just affected by it. We are drawn to mushrooms. We love to eat them. We love them as medicine. Just, we love the cultivation, everything about them. Magical so, seems cliche, but it is magical. It is, it is, yeah, it's the it's right just, term. It's the right it's term. Just, everything about it is, yes. yeah. So, real. so for me, this is just the next natural progression, right? I, I had a few people um, at the Ohio Mushroom Festival and a few people at NAMA who just quietly came over and said, man, I can't tell you what, you, you know, how much I love this show. Um, it sort of validated a lot of people who were just sitting in their basements growing mushrooms quietly in private. And, uh, you know, we're, we're weird. No one, I went to a part, I went to an eclipse party today. You think I could talk to everybody about growing mushrooms? Nobody wants to talk to me about growing <laughs> it's mushrooms. It's a rare occasion. Yeah. yeah so, it's a rare it, thing. you know, it's, it's really nice to connect. Oh <clears> my it, gosh. It, it's yeah. nice to get to know, like, I'm just going to say for, <clears throat> for me, going to Mexico with you two, it was just so cool. Uh, clicking with you guys, getting along. We really got along with our buddy Cougar as well. Shout out yeah. to Cougar. What's up, um, Cougar? Like just, just comfortable right off the bat. <laughs> and, and and we we had such a cool time there. I think we'll, we'll spend a little bit of time talking about why we love Mexico, why that was the first choice for us. You know, why we said, well, just the, it's got to be the first place we go to. I think so, a big part of it is like we all get to know each other to a degree online, but there's only so much you can do right. that. Right. And then in right. person, it just, right. You yes. know, it's, yes. it's cool. It's a really neat experience. And you're just doing things together, right? You're, you're learning together. You're wandering through the woods together. You're sweating yeah. as you climb uh, yet another 15 
hundred foot altitude gain in, in you know a quarter mile or something like that. Yes. And some dude cruises past you on a mule. <laughs> and some dude cruises past you on a mule. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. So let's do this. So before we go too too deep into Mexico, um, let's just talk about our backgrounds. Um, I, now you guys have both been on the show, so some people have seen it, some people haven't. So let's just tell everybody, you know, our first quickly our first mushroom memories, um, and then how mushrooms have kind of uh, myceliated into our lives and just become this really big deal for us. Um, let's just start with Don. So my first mushroom memories are uh, slightly traumatic, not really, but it was basically canned mushrooms. You know, like that's what we had when I was a kid <laughs> was canned mushrooms. Um, we weirdly the only time i remember eating them it was with tacos very appropriate to, to to where we're going but um i don't know why we ate them on and i still love them even though they were rubbery and nasty um but uh you know mushrooms in my family were toadstools they were you know toxic you should never touch them anything any mushroom growing in the yard was you know you step on it you you you, you know it's basically I, I was mycophobic, um, for a very long time. Um, and then just, you know, started to get really about 20 years ago, started to get really, uh, intrigued by all the mushrooms popping up in my yard in Kent, Ohio. Um, saw like dozens of different species throughout the year, different colors, you know, bolites. I didn't know what those were at the time, but red mushrooms that when I broke them in half, they turned blue. Uh, there were these other, you know, puff balls and all these other uh, deer mushrooms and things. And basically, uh, my brother-in-law got me the Audubon Field Guide to North American Mushrooms for a Christmas gift. And I just read that thing all winter. <laughs> you know, that was all there, all there was to do at that point. And I just started to familiarize myself with mushrooms. Um, started to venture out the next year. I think I, a puff ball was maybe one of the first things I ate. Purple spored puff ball, which was okay. You know, it, was, it wasn't... Uh, it's not like a, you know, a culinarily uh, spectacular mushroom, but I was like, okay, I can figure that out. Um, and then the deer mushrooms, then onto morels and onto everything. Chanterelles were actually one of the, um, kind of the, one of the first things I kind of nailed. And it just, yeah, it just became this thing where I, I'm such, I'm so into, um, you know, nature, uh, you know, to begin with, and then to be able to go out and bring food home and, and like, crazy ass food you know that's like most people would just like look at and just they kind of look at you like really yeah. um, or pay a ton of money for in a michelin rated restaurant exactly right? um and that's the so, coolest part to me <laughs> yeah so that just kind of got me hooked uh started taking you know friends and family out and then you know people started to uh started to suggest that i run classes so I don't know, 16, 15, 16 years ago, I started the Mushroom Hunter, came up with that um, that name and, and website and whatnot, um, started taking people out to local um, parks around here and doing private mushroom hunts, teaching them what I knew, um, and which back then wasn't a lot. It was more than everyone else. I could tell you that, that, that I was, that I was meeting and taking and taking out, but um, every year just learn more and more and just, it, it just like, sponge absorbed as much of this information as possible. And, um, and yeah, it, it really, you know, I, I was doing everything from, you know, like, uh, I don't know, two and a half hour hunts with 15 people or so to complete weekends where I would book, um, an entire like group campsite, uh, at a state park and a bunch of people would come and camp all weekend and I would cook all the food and we would just mushroom hunt all weekend. And man, it's exactly like what you were saying in your, in your opening, like bringing these people together. And, and I know now I brought people together that are now friends and now do things on their own. Like it's, it is no joke how something like that can really hook people together. Um, and people who would, who would uh, otherwise never meet. You know, like you have like right. the preppers and then you have uh, whatever the opposite of that is and you have everybody in between. And it's like you're out in the woods, you're you're camping like politics doesn't matter. Nothing matters except you're here for this one reason. Uh, right. And yeah, to me, it's it's like it, it's a it is it's 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 a spiritual it's transformative. It's, you know, it's everything. I love it. All right. So how about uh, natural state? Uh, we, we've done this one before, but let's do it again. 
yeah, man. Uh, l- l- early mushroom memories. How oh, wow. and and how how do we get to where we are with with you now obsessed with mushrooms like the rest of us? I'll kind of semi nutshell it. Yeah. So at uh at like I don't know probably seventeen to eighteen had my first mushroom trip. You know, with like some golden teachers or whatever we bought at the time, a couple gram trip, nothing special. And then at nineteen, I went to the Pacific Northwest after kind of getting semi sober from partying for a little bit. Uh, I went there for the first time and went on some hikes and found just a plethora of different mushrooms and became pretty enamored. And um, I kind of lightly learned some some basic taxonomy with some choice edibles and stuff over the years. And um, I've, I've foraged pretty heavily for choice edibles, lots of lion's mane, morels, chanterelles. But then um, I, I've struggled with opiate use throughout most of my adult life. And uh, at the age of, uh, I don't know, it was probably five years ago, six years ago, I got on methadone. Uh, and it just felt like I was stuck. And I wasn't really sure how to how to get out of that cycle. Uh, and I remembered, you know, seeing a lot of articles recently about mushrooms helping people and remembered having used them. And I just figured, Hey, they were at least benign, right? Like worst case, it's not going to benefit me. Best case it does. So I gave it a shot and, uh, it was pretty powerfully helpful. Um, I've been off methadone now for over a year and, uh, yeah it's it it made it very easy so that was that's been my like lead up to being enamored and i i've got to cultivate these things and try to you know not figure them out i guess but you know as close as we can right so i love that yeah so so for you i mean like right so for me i just wanted my adhd better i i was not struggling i mean it's a problem but but I was not battling a, a major addiction. Sure. How how did the cultivation practice influence that? Man, I'm glad you asked that because <clears throat> to be completely honest, I'm not sure which plays a larger role. Right. To be completely honest with you, I don't know. And, I, and I've struggled with that over time of like, well, you know, if I had to have one or the, I, I don't know. I don't know which one, but cultivation is huge. I mean, just everything about it, the, the patience, the, you know, taking it a step at a time, everything about mushrooms is, is beneficial for addict, the addict mentality, right? And the addict mentality in, in my brain starts at a very young age. We give kids sugar and caffeine and screens, right. and, you know, and so almost anyone has something that they can, you know, could, could do without or could, could use help oh, getting yeah. past so that's really where my passion is in all this, man, is like yes. it's, yeah, yeah. But but really for addicts and veterans, I think it's a, man. Well, okay, first off, I've said it before, I'll say it again, good job getting off methadone. Thanks, man. A lot of people don't, and amen for mushrooms playing a role in that, whether it's the cultivation yeah. or the trip, it, it, it doesn't matter either way. Both very it's, much. it's probably both. I <laughs> yeah, think it's both very both. much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, And uh, I can, so for me, uh, you, most people probably heard me say this too many times, but my very first mushroom memories was just, we, we grew up, we were right a couple houses down from the state park in Muskegon. We, I spent all my childhood in the woods, sun up to sundown all the time. I was just in the woods. Mushrooms for me were cool. They looked neat. I loved finding a new one. I loved throwing it against a tree. That, that was what it was in the beginning. Then I had a, a, an aunt and uncle from a little bit north of where we lived. They they hunted morels. We went to a couple get-togethers a few times. And, and that was my first exposure to, you could eat some of these. But my dad, just like Don's talking about, <laughs> he came from a Polish family. And they were like, don't touch mushrooms. Don't even touch them. They thought if you just touch them. So I would come home with some, showing them sometimes, and they'd be like, oh, put those away, throw them in the trash. But I always thought they just look neat, right? They just look cool. And for me, yeah, just just like uh, Natural State said, you know, uh, used it for fun when I was younger, teen. But, but as an adult, I had a big gap between then and, and, and now. COVID definitely played a role in that. I 
have been struggling with the effects of ADHD on my life, just always feeling like, man, this is so much more of a disability than I can even put into words. And just out of desperation, saw this article one day and said, well, fuck, I just, I got to try this stuff because all the Western medicine didn't work for me or it worked, but then it had too many consequences, too many side effects, whatever. Yeah. The rest is history. Mushrooms have utterly transformed my life. Um, the cultivation is huge. Um, the improvements I've had from ADHD are significant, but not, not like a hundred percent. It didn't utterly solve all my ADHD problems, but it did so many other things for me that I could, even if I had to go back and do it again, knowing it didn't cure my ADHD. Of course, you're always secretly hoping it's going to cure everything. Right. But it doesn't. I wouldn't even hesitate. It's just so amazing to cultivate these things. It's so amazing to experience them macro, micro, museum levels. They are a very, like natural state said, a very benign drug. And I have been just completely smitten ever since. It's been almost three years now. I'm obsessed. I can't, it is not letting up. It's not going to let up. And since it's not going to let up, it kind of in line with the podcast, I'm just like, okay, <laughs> I, I'm, I love all this. I love coming together with people, man, yep. going to NAMA was amazing. Going to Mexico was unbelievable. Going to the Ohio mushroom festival was so fun just to meet people. And I still meet people <clears throat> that just message me and go, Hey, I'm in Youngstown. Hey, I'm like an hour away from you, dude, let's go have lunch. I'll take you to lunch. Let's, let's meet up. That is what really gets me. So uh, here I am here. You guys are. Um, now, so Don King, he's been leading four A's for 16 years. Um, I, I'm going to be honest. I think I've told him this, but when I first got into cultivating, I of course immediately looked around like are there people around, you know, where I live who might do this. His name popped up immediately. He was on my radar. I kept trying to go to his weekend camping trips, but they would sell out before I could get, get to them. So it was so ironic that as we're, you know, sharing a ride to the Cleveland airport to, to go to Mexico, I'm just sitting there thinking, like, I tried to get on these guys, this guy's <laughs> trip so many times. And here I, we're going to go spend a week together. This is amazing. <laughs> so, yes. Um, so, yeah, let's talk a little bit. Um, so Don has done this a, a lot. Natural State and me, we, we definitely forage for edibles. I can identify quite a bit of edible mushrooms. I can't identify everything I see for sure. I'm, I'm growing. I'm getting better at, at identifying things. I'm getting better at looking things up and, you know, going through dichotomous keys and stuff like that. But what I really love about us is we're kind of all at different phases. Yeah, very much. So, so just like Don was saying that he's watched people who he used to take out, they're now friends. They go out together. They're learning together. That's, that's kind of what we're about to do, right? Mm -hmm. Like, from this year's, you know, first trip to five years from now, we're not going to be the same foragers, right? We're, we're just, we're all going to grow. We're all going to get better at this. So uh, that's very exciting for me. I imagine exciting for you guys. Um, yes. l let's do this. Let's talk <laughs> a little bit about, I'm looking at my little show notes here. Um, so for me, and I want to hear from you guys, but for me, the the going to Mexico for me was a really big deal because I was out of my element. It wasn't just my usual trails. Yeah. Right. It wasn't the Ohio Mushroom Festival. It wasn't NAMA. NAMA, it, it was in Appalachia. It really didn't feel that different from the the mushrooming that, that I do up here in, in Northeast Ohio. So Mexico, though, it's another country. Yeah. And we were seeing species, you know, a lot of psilocybe, and I'm just, it's just blowing my mind. I just can't express enough how crazy it is to walk up on multiple species of yeah. psilocybe mushrooms. It's an experience, yeah. And, and just everywhere you look, not only psilocybe, but a ton, I mean, just mushrooms everywhere. I mean, everywhere. It's, just, yeah. everywhere. it's just absurd. Um, and the, and the plant life too is, is pretty astounding. Um, yeah. And, 
Oh, go. Sorry. I was gonna say to me, it was it, it was like it, it kind of it's like I I sort of knew this was gonna happen, but blew my mind when you know you're you're in Mexico and you're finding chanterelles and black yes. trumpets right. and oyster. Yes. It's just like yes. you're like, wait a minute, like like uh, of okay, yeah, of course that makes sense, but. And I just wasn't expecting that. You, right. you you look down and you're like, wait, where am I? Am I in am I at home? The state park or am I in a cloud forest of Mexico? Right. And yeah. then you look at them and you're like, these look a little different than the one, you know, they're they're right. a slightly different species. Yeah. But man, this is a chanterelle. It smells like a chanterelle. It looks like it. It peels like it, you know. Uh, and and then there's the bull eats. I'm like, yeah, I eat those all the time. Oh, I eat that thing. Uh, oh, we collect that for medicine. Right. You know, it's it that that's what would kind of just it, what really got got me thinking that this is a global thing too you know it's like yeah. it, it, and it doesn't stop in mexico right you, you mentioned uh you know Pol polish heritage like people in poland are collecting chanterelles right people yeah. in uh in everywhere in russia and and wherever in in italy it's just it's to me it's just amazing and i think that's why there's such a um you know there's there's such like a, a pole pulling together of people yeah over this one hobby yeah mm -hmm. yeah so uh so for me also this trip to mexico i had been to mexico before but i was always like it was tourist mexico right it yeah it was uh let's drive down from la and go to tijuana go to ensenada maybe take a little you know when i was younger take a trip to cancun or something like that but I had never been in like just Mexico, Mexico, like an yeah. authentic Mexican experience of this is how the average Mexican, you know, lives, lives Goes their lives. Yeah, daily life, exactly. right. Neither had I. Yeah. So same. I thought that was amazing. Now, I, I lived in L.A. for a while, so there's some familiarity <laughs> there. You know, there's a couple Mexican guys that, that live in L.A. and I, I worked with a bunch of them and. So like uh, there was some familiarity there, but overall it was just so cool to see the culture of Mexico, to meet the people, um, and 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 do some you know ranging from not too bad hikes to some pretty hardcore hikes. Yeah, and uh, just seeing I, for for me the seeing the different philosophy was was pretty amazing. It it for me it informed my. I don't know if I came home and said, I have 19 different things I'm going to try as far as techs go, but just literally seeing where they grow, like exactly how tall the grass is that the pans are in and, or exactly what kind of hill the, the zaps are on. And do you know what I mean? Like yeah. that kind of stuff, it, it, it was really cool. It was. Well, and even just getting to witness them in that habitat yeah. there, you know, kind of where it all, yeah. where it all started to a degree you know it's like it's it's yeah. it's it's pretty pretty profound yeah, yeah. It's, it's contextualizing this this love that we have for cultivating these actives or or gourmets or whatever yep. that, yes it is just cool to see all well, and like stuff. you said you're you're out of your element a little bit you're not you're not in your normal surroundings your normal settings so in a good way, right? Like it, it shakes things up a bit and you're, you're experiencing everything around you all the time is, is new, right? Like, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. I, I think like sometimes it, it's actually, it really helps me to do that, to get somewhere else because, you know, I, I hike, if I, you know, I'm sure I'm like a lot of other people where I hike the same places a lot, right? Like all yeah. summer going to the same places because I know there are going to be mushrooms there. Sometimes I have tunnel vision. It's just like, I don't even, I don't even pay attention. I'm just, wa I'm just wa speed walking. Right. I know where this is. Are. To yeah. the tree, the one yeah. stump. The yeah, yeah, yeah. Tree. And who yes. knows what the hell totally. I'm passing. But when you're right. in another place, every, like you said, everything is new. The grass looks different. Yeah. The bugs are to everything. And so you start to notice everything and it just, it's a perfect opportunity to learn new things and to yeah. just really keep your eyes peeled and yeah and just like let it all flow in and notice those different colors different yeah. patterns these things that you know uh i don't even know if i would have have been thinking about 30 years ago if i if i went on a, a trip to mexico like that mm -hmm. probably wouldn't have been i would have been like oh cool yeah oh, pretty pretty sweet right. like when's dinner you know which is amazing uh, you know like, oh, yes. that's a whole another topic oh yeah but, uh, but yeah like yeah to me it's it, it's it's that uh it's just it's just different enough. You know, it's, it's a, it's such a profound experience. It is. It's cool. 
Yeah, so um, I think 100%, I just, I'm going to take the, the moment right now to say, get out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Right? Go, go, go for it. I got, so, so we got, for this upcoming trip that, that we're going to get into, we, we got 34 spots. We I think we've sold about 14 of them. Um, so we still got plenty of spots for people. Yeah. But but I just want to tell you guys, 100%, you will be learning a lot on this trip. You are around people who like to learn and like to share information. I specifically yeah. agreed to do this business with Natural State and Don King because I saw on this trip, their willingness to share information, their willingness to help others, their willingness to find an answer to something. I just, I got to watch everybody in the group dynamic and was utterly impressed. I think that's probably why I felt real comfortable around you guys. Um, you guys just kind of giving off the same vibe, the same energy. So um, yeah, I just want to take a minute to say that. So now, I, would echo, I would echo that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We all clicked really well on the trip and, and just in, in diving deeper into getting, in, getting to know each other and kind of sharing some same community ties. Right. Uh, yeah, it just, yeah. And we have a, uh, we, we all bring something completely different to the table too. Yes. Right. Like there's a, there's in the Venn diagram, there's a huge overlap, but it's like, you know, certain things here, like, yeah, I've, I've cultivated mushrooms. Not like, not like you guys, uh, you foraged probably not to the extent that I have, yep, right? It's exactly. like this, it, um, it's, it's like, it's this really great, just harmony, like this sort of Trinity of, right. of experience and skill level that I think is, is really important when people are counting on you for, for an, for just an yes. amazing, like once in a lifetime trip. Um, yeah. yeah. No pun intended. In a foreign country. Yeah, no, <laughs> right. I mean, not, I don't, I don't know if I meant to get into this, but since you said that, it, it just made me think of this. So, like, take away the mushrooms. We also have background. Don, you have a background in education, natural state. You were a very successful businessman. I have a background in. I was a corporate trainer. I was a performer. Like we all, and I also know uh, Don is also a musician and performer. So we all bring kind of just a very foundational set of skills and experiences and background where <laughs> when we are together, we are, it's good. It's, there's a synergy. It just, it just feels right. And ever since we started getting together and talking about this and planning it out, it has felt like that from day one. Well, we want to travel together, right? So it's like, we want to travel together and travel with other people who want to travel right. and learn the same things and like it's just it was so much fun it was like we can't not you know yeah we had fun we gotta keep doing it yeah, yeah we gotta exactly. keep doing this this yeah. is amazing yes we gotta bring everybody in yeah now so i also want to talk about um before we get into the the first trip i want to talk about the fact that just on the basis of this platform and my expectation that uh the vast majority of people who go at least on this very first trip are going to be cultivators. So I think there's a lot to be said for you're going to get to hang out with a lot of people who grow mushrooms. That's cool. I So even Don, even though you said that you don't have quite the cultivation experience, let's not forget Don is the chief mycology officer for Epiphany Mushrooms, a big local mushroom company. So he is in the process of gearing up and learning all this stuff on a higher level than he did before. So even from that perspective, you're going to, in a year or two, know more about commercial mushroom production than I ever even need to know about. Mm -hmm. So, so I think that's also, as time goes on, another cool thing is you're going to have that built in and we're going to be able to build camaraderie, build, you know, professional and personal relationships with the people that go on these trips. Yeah. It matters. I mean, look what happened yes. to us. We we went on one week trip in Mexico and we're now like, you know, we talk all the time. We're yep. bouncing ideas off each other. It's it, it's mm -hmm. it's cool, man. Um, all right. So where are we at next? All right. So I want to talk about real quick some of our plans. Now, we <clears throat> kind of have two agendas here. So we are for sure always looking to 
myceliate, connect people. So wherever we go, we the first agenda is to find as many mushroom loving people as we possibly can. So if we go to a destination and there's an eminent mycologist there, we will utterly certainly reach out to those, those people, try to get them uh, associated with the trip, try to get them to do a foray, a lecture, what have you, whatever level of connection they want to have. But also we want to get local guides. We want to get people like us who love mushrooms, but maybe don't have a PhD. So it, it, it's not just about getting PhDs, celebrities, stuff like that, that will surely happen on certain trips, but we also want those authentic local people because that's, that's the flavor that that's like the real deal, right? Like you can go to PF Chang's and, and try Chinese food, or you can go to like Mr. Chang's and see, <laughs> see what real Chinese food tastes like. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, so. and I mean, those, the, the local guys that, that, you know, that we're dealing with so far, they're the ones that are out there hiking these trails all the time. All the time. And, you know, they're the ones that are living in that area and they know the area, yeah. they know, you know, where you should go, where you shouldn't go, you know? And, and it's like, and it's not even that, it's like, oh, that's, that's where I went to elementary school yeah. that we're driving by, right? Like this is yeah. their home. Yeah. This is where they're from. So that, that, that's another piece that that's important to, how we put these trips together. So, um, where was I? All right. I had one thing about benefits of exploring mushrooms in their natural habitat. I think we kind of covered that. That's, you, you know, the cubes, the psilocybe species, right? They're, they're all over the place and yet they're also not all over the place. Yeah. It's, and, and the, you know, the subtropical kind of zones that they, they are in, um, they are usually two or three species. Yep. We're going to a region on this first trip where there are, you know, six to 12 species, depending upon how lucky we get. So the, the concentration is pretty special. I'm, uh, I think on our trip, we saw four or five species, six species, somewhere around there. Um, yeah. You know, that the, the goal we, we sought out to get the best guides we could, I'm confident we will exceed six species for sure on this trip. Um, so. That's not in writing, guys. You know, <laughs> you don't get your money back if, if, if we only find five. But I'm, I'm pretty confident we're, we're going to find quite a few. So, all right. Now, let's get into uh, the nuts and bolts of the trip. Um, I kind of want to talk about, broadly speaking, in the beginning, we're, we're going to be running a few trips a year. We're, we're trying to find the best, juiciest, you know, amazing, transformative places. Not just, you know, we don't want to go to like the desert of Serbia to find one specific <laughs> rare mushroom that, you know, if you find it, you become an instant mycology god. That's not what we're trying to do. We, we want you to, right, we're taking you on eco tours for mushroom lovers. So we, we want it to be fun. Still, we want there to be cultural value. We want there to be amazing food. We want it to be gorgeous. So, so we're, we're picking places like that. So let's get a little bit into, um, kind of the, the mentality. I want to hear from everybody. I, I, I'll talk a little bit about mine, but just kind of like what you wanted out of a tour, what, you know, when you're sitting down going, we're going to start, we're going to be a tour operator. We're going to put package these tours. And in the beginning you go, well, we're going to package the kind of tours that we want to go on that we wish we could go on. Yep. And so, so maybe talk a little bit natural state, if you want to start, sure. yeah. um, just, you know, like Absolutely. what do you care about in a trip? What, what are you trying to make sure that our company brings to the table when we do this man for me first and foremost if i'm going on something that's like pre-planned out right like hey everything's for the most part it's it's all inclusive right like except for airfare to get there right uh, if, if i'm going on something like that i like it to be well organized really well thought out and and backup plans for things right because things happen in life right, right. and so right. For me, that was really important. And I think that was, again, a reason that all of us clicked well was that I, I feel that all of us are 
fairly detail oriented in different ways. Again, like you said, Don, it, it's like we kind of fill each other's gaps in different ways. I think it's, it's interesting, but yeah, that for me, that's a huge aspect. And then, uh, you know, extremely fun and memorable experiences, uh, that are, that are well, well presented. Um, I, I think, I think that really, really counts as far as like, here's some context for what we're doing here, you know, and, and, and really giving that, uh, that, that to me brings a lot of value when I travel. So, yeah. Cool, man. All right. Well, what about you, Don? Yeah. I mean, obviously that, like that's, that's a huge issue for me, um, is, is just making sure that, you know, that we, we have our ducks in a row. And like you said, things happen. We, we know that like on our own vacations, on our own trips, things happen. Of course. Um, Plan B's are great. Plan C's are even better. Uh, but it's also like to me, it's important to to be to feel safe too, to to feel like I'm in a safe place with yeah. safe people. Um, and we specifically, you know, uh, we specifically chose the 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 uh, eco resort we're going to because of that. I mean, that that's just well, right. It just it's just that automatically, right? It's it's so private. It's gated. It's, it's got yeah, a security just, guard. You, you never felt, you know, awkward or weird, you know, um, there, there weren't a ton of other people necessarily staying there when, when uh, we visited. Um, so it's going to have a lot different vibe. I'm sure there's going to be, you know, it's going to be a lot more energy, but yeah, it's just, I, I felt, um, I felt super comfortable there, especially being in a, you know, in a foreign country, being in a country where I don't have a super good grasp of the language, you yeah. know? Right. But we 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 like made it work. I mean, how many times were we holding our phones with Google Translate? No one even batted an eye. I mean, it, it, the 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 twenty five year old server um, at the restaurant or the eighty year old grandma in town who were trying to buy whatever tacos from. You just and we're yeah. learning, right? Yeah. yeah, it just like no one. It was just like this open open thing. It felt so comfortable. Like I never felt like I didn't belong there. Like right. as, you know, a really white, white guy in uh, walking around, uh, you know, Jalapa, Mexico, like it, it just felt, it felt right. And to me, that's a, an extremely important thing. Um, and yeah, that's, I think that's the, one of the biggest, biggest draws for me and, and something that I'm really, you know, passionate about and want to make sure that that, that vibe always uh, continues. Well, essentially being able to be comfortable when you're on vacation, right? Like that's right. what that boils down to. Everybody wants to be comfy when they're on vacation. And yeah. and I would agree, man, there was never a minute that we've been in that region of Mexico where I've felt not comfortable. No. Yeah. It, yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Sorry, Geeky. Um, so safety, yes. Um, so medically speaking, uh, there's going to be at a minimum uh, – almost 99% 9999 likelihood that there will be a physician on this first trip. Uh, there's always going to be a registered nurse, right? I'm, I'm, I'm an ER nurse. I, I bring back to li life people pretty regularly. Um, we, uh, I, I'm trauma informed. I, I know how to do all sorts of stuff to keep people safe. I also know my, my biggest skill as a nurse is that I assess all the time. So I'll be assessing everybody. We'll be, you know, we'll be making sure that we, to go off in natural states, uh, kind of main point, communication's big for me. So we're going to be very clearly communicating what we're doing all the time, when we're doing it, what, what it's going to entail, you know, how you prep for it, how intense it might be. And we have specifically specifically looked for hikes that uh you know they're, they're not just walking down a flat paved road uh but a lot of them are, are are not terrible we we have one that's a pretty aggressive hike uh and and during that one we're going to have an alternate hike uh, available for people who don't want to do that one so you know for me it's really like don was saying my big thing, I am a craftsman, right? Like I craft this podcast. I used to build houses. I used to craft music. I used to craft poems. I make things. So I really view this like a, a, a product. I am making what I hope to be an astoundingly well thought out trip that has the confidence of planning behind it, 
uh, like Don was saying, it's going to have, you know, the plan B. So we, the day that we're going to go on the, you know, coolest hike of all time, we wake up in the morning and it's raining. Did we plan for that? Yes, of course we planned for that. We got that all lined up already. We were watching the weather, all that kind of stuff. I'm ready to kill this. So, and, and I know Don, <laughs> we, we were saying something one time about, Oh, we need to have this on, uh, we should have this on group chat or we should have a GPS, something or other for that. And Don was like, oh, I'm going to have a manual. We're going to, I'm going to have the driving directions for everywhere we go in a booklet ready to go. Like I am yeah. not going to depend on, and I'm just like, yeah. I'm, this is why this is the guy. This yeah. is why this is my yeah. guy. No doubt. Yeah, you, you really have to, you know, things do go wrong. <clears throat> things don't work out the way you think they're going to. So you got to be able to roll with the punches. You got to be smart. You got to think critically. You got to be able yeah. to adjust. So um, you got a team of people right here who know how to do that for sure. We're all pretty well traveled. We've done this sort of thing before. We spend a lot of times, a lot of time out in the woods. So we're, we're ready to take you guys out on, on a trip, your absolute trip of a lifetime. And I also want to just real quickly add that, um, like this is a culmination of something that has been like brewing in my brain for a long time. Um, Let's talk so about that. Yes. Yeah. I, so I'm, you know, I mentioned how I've done lots of local trips. I'm, I'm like foraging everywhere I go. If I'm visiting my brother-in-law in the Pacific Northwest, I'm looking for mushrooms. I'm going up to the UP to to like hang out with with family. I'm looking for mushrooms. Looking for my, you know, everywhere I go. Um, uh, I was afforded the opportunity um, to take a trip to Colombia, um, and this was uh, oh boy, well, two 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 years ago, two a year and a half ago, and. Um, one of my, one of my, um, goals was I wanted to go to this place. I was going to go to Bogota and spend some time there. And also in the, in the Amazon region, um, near Bogota, I hired, uh, a woman named Tatiana San Juan, who is a freaking amazing mycologist. Um, I hooked up with her several days to go hiking in the clouds forests and to visit mushroom farms. She took me all over, um, with the explicit, uh, uh, the reasoning behind this was I wanted to, I was thinking about doing this, like having some kind of mushroom travel, um, like taking, take a small group to Columbia. That's why I was trying to meet these people and go to these places. Um, I had an amazing experience, met just freaking awesome people. But when I got back, I was like, holy shit, like, how am I going to do this? I can't do this on my own. I can't, this is too much. It's too overwhelming. Um, you know, I can handle a, a camping trip at West Branch State Park with 15 people for three days. Uh, how am I going to handle this many people in a different country? And so it just kind of like, you know, it, it kind of went put on the, it was put on the back burner. And then it was literally when we were hanging out in, in Mexico last year. And it's just like, hey, wait a minute. Uh, this, this, what about us? <laughs> what, about what about us? There what about go. us? Like <laughs> now I'm not so afraid anymore. I'm not, I, yeah. it's, it's doable. It's not this right. like insurmountable mountain. Um, and yeah, I mean, right away, like, I think it, when we got back from maybe before I even got back from Mexico after meeting, oh, you guys, we were already talking about it. Yeah. yeah. We were already talking about it. Yeah. And I even told my partner, Sarah, I'm like, yeah, I met like lifelong friends, like these people, yeah. we know I've only spent like, like six days with them, seven days, but like, <laughs> I felt like longer. Yeah, it felt yeah. longer. And it's like, this is gonna work out. And man, I'm really excited to start talking about this. And we started talking about it. Um, it still seemed like a lot, like so far away, right? Really? Like, yeah. How is this ever gonna work, right? Oh, everybody, yeah, keep dreaming, and here we are. Like it's yeah. it's it's like a whirlwind of just amazement. Like I'm yeah. I cannot be more excited. Man, I tell you what, you know, I get people got ideas for me every day, it seems like. Oh, geeky, you should do this, you should do that. Oh, team up with me to do this. I get pitch crap all the time, all the time. So when we started talking about this, there was just a little twinge where I was like, I think this one's going to happen. I think yeah. this is going to be the one. And it just, we just kept nailing deadlines. We just kept making it happen. I mean, for, for those of you who haven't started a business, this will be my fourth one. Um, I know natural, natural state's got a few. 
Um, yep. There's a lot to it. You know, there, there is a lot to put it together. And when you're taking people out of the country, right, you got to, you got to get insurance policies written. You got to get your ducks in a row. Uh, you're going to a country where you don't speak the language. So you got to have interpreters. Uh, you got to have all these things line up and everything just kept lining up. We recently went down there to, you know, finalize yeah. the, 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 the trip and, and all the people that are going to be a part of it. And that all went smoothly. And we're just like, yeah. this just all, just all falling together. It's like, we care about this and we want this to work or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Um, so, okay. So for people who don't know, um, it, it will be in the description below. I was supposed to add it before this thing started and I forgot to update the description. So I'll do that, uh, as soon as it's done. But for those of you guys who want to check it out, websites, easy, mycotrex.tours, M Y C O T R E K S dot tours. Go check it out. We got single rooms. Uh, they're, they're not as cheap as the shared rooms. We do not have any rooms where more than two people share the room. So it's basically either two people share a room or you pay more to get a single room. Um, we got, uh, like I said, total, uh, 34 people we can take on this trip. I think we got 14 beds spoken for us. So we still got 20 people who can go on this trip with us. Uh, we anticipate it will sell out. Um, and we anticipate we are going to have the time of our lives. We are going, just so we people should know this, so we are going to the Jalapa region. It's the capital of the state of Veracruz in Mexico, which is one of the southern states. Um, I forget who told me this, but uh, I, I think it's one of our guides who said, it's kind of like the Florida of Mexico. It's where a lot of you know well, well off Mexicans go to retire. Yep. Um, it, it's a, a safer part of Mexico. Uh, some of the safest, uh, you, you know, areas. Veracruz in general, I believe, in is the general, safest yeah. state in Mexico. But yeah, that yeah. region is also, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, for those of you guys who are wondering about the temperature, uh, when you fly into Veracruz, it's going to be hot there. But Balmy. by the time you get to Jalapa in the cloud forest region, uh, it, it will be pretty temperate. So yeah. I, I think the only time I really ever sweated real bad was just that really intense hike that we went on. So yeah. It was hot that day too. Yeah. And, yeah. It, and, gets, yeah. it can get a little, you know, get yeah. like comfortably warm in the day. Like I'm a, I'm a heat generator. Like I'm somebody who, if it's too hot, I'm so uncomfortable, especially like sleeping at night and everything. Like, it's just, I've just been that way, but like, it's, it's like, it's warm in the day, but it gets cool at night. Like it's, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to think like, it's almost like, I don't know, like, like fall in the Midwest, right. Where, where it's like, it's not quite summer yet, you know, or, or it's it's past summer. Like it's still you're gonna have your warm days. It's gonna get cool right. at night. Um, it's uh yeah, it's it's a it's it's a nice place. It's yeah, it's excellent, very temperate. Yeah, yeah. So for uh, people who don't know, there are not a lot of habitats like this. Uh, cloud forests, right? They have to be at the right altitude. They have to be in the right geographical regions, but basically they're these really special areas where cl the cloud formations are very low. The weather's temperate. It, um, it makes for some pretty amazing mushrooming. Um, uh, like Don said earlier, I was pretty surprised at how just how many mushrooms of all sorts there were. Like there, it, it, it was cool. Yeah, when we first when we first saw chanterelles, I think we were all kind of doing a double take of like, wait, yeah. right, wait, yeah. yeah. It, it it was it was pretty neat. Yeah, that cloud forest stays wet twenty four seven, so it's just a haven. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um. So that it, it was so distinct. I'd never, I've been a lot of places. I had never, I've been in actual jungles. I've been in rainforests. I've been in this, that, the other thing. I'd never actually been to a cloud forest. The bromeliads, the air plants, the orchids. I mean, really cool. I'm telling you guys, you don't just have to love mushrooms to, to love the vibe down there. It's, it's pretty great. The hummingbirds and butterflies and, oh, and yeah. uh, everything. Yes. It's yeah, insane. It's, it's great. The biodiversity is intense the fungal diversity is also extremely impressive so yeah for for nature lovers in general it, it's pretty great um 
So I want to talk a little bit about uh, the hotel. Um, we were trying to find just, we just kept looking around for hotels. We were like, you know, it's just like dating, right? You just, you can, you can come up with your little list of, well, my dream woman is going to be like this. And then you just meet her. Right. And, and so we, we did the same thing. We, as soon as we saw this place, we said this, this is it. This place yeah. is amazing. So, oh my gosh. um, it is a lovely hotel. It is authentic. Some of the buildings, some of the buildings are new, but, but some of the buildings are super old, very historic, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous foods, phenomenal. So we got everybody set up. We're going to have, uh, everybody gets served their food. Um, but we're going to have multiple food options going, you know, if, if you got allergies, if, if you're vegetarian, if you're vegan, pescatarian, we got you all taken care of. It's yep. nobody is going to have any problems for food. And most of the food is like locally grown and sourced. Yeah. Um, even like they're on premises, they have like eggs that they, you know, they got chickens that they collect eggs from every day. And you're, you're drinking their coffee every yeah. morning that from their own coffee. It, yeah, it's, it's special. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. Far, farm to table. Oh, like, and they're chilaquiles sure. guys. Oh, oh, yeah, so cool. oh, I've been craving it since we left, man. I like I Same. can't. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. yeah so so we're taking care of you guys right like if we're gonna make you work your butts off and wander around the woods looking for <laughs> mushrooms stand up sit down you know a couple of these hikes you might get rained on in the afternoon if we're gonna put you through all that then we're gonna take care of you when, when you get back to the hotel we'll feed you well hotel is nice it's mm -hmm. luxurious there's a pool there's a hot tub there's full spa services the services are so unbelievably cheap. I mean, like a full body massage for 40 bucks. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. Isn't it like an hour body massage for an hour? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah I forget all the details. It's all on the website, but yeah. So, you know, if, if you and your spouse want to come and maybe your spouse isn't quite as into mushrooms as you are, that's okay. There's other things for them to do. Yes. There's definitely. Other yeah. Things. The so, restaurant is just cool in general. Like the, it just, is just the premises. Like they have trails that you can walk just right. there on site. Right. Like there's yeah. so much to do. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, um, so we will be doing one, uh, guided, uh, there's, a uh, for people who don't know, right. This is, um, the old stomping grounds of Gaston Guzman. He was like the, the grandfather of psilocybe. He was the first mycologist to really, you know, kind of take psilocybe and run with it. And he identified and described uh, countless active mushrooms in the region and all over Mexico and places beyond. He's very famous. Anyway, he, he worked at a place called Ine Cole. It's like an ecological institute there. And uh, so we'll, we'll be having somebody from Ine Cole come in and do uh, a guided tour around the hotel, uh, which has incredible biodiversity, even right there. So they, they have a butterfly orchid trail. We're going to be checking all that out. Um, we're going to offer a horseback riding for people who want to do that. Maybe want to chill out and, you know, don't want to go on a hike one day. Um, and then we're, we're getting out and about, we're going to go on hikes, you know, in and around Jalapa, Hico, Cuatapac, uh, Acajete, all these places in this region uh that's sort of adjacent to one of the very large mountains in um in mexico called cofre de uh parote uh very big mountain very cool checking out some coffee plantations all that good stuff so w one thing that mattered for me and, and you guys can talk about this if if you want as well for me i was like so I had this, when I was a corporate trainer, I had to go on this just insane flight to Hong Kong one time for, for a training. And I got there, I did the training. It was raining. I was there for two days. <laughs> I did it. I left. I never saw Hong Kong 18, like 18 plus hours each way. Yeah. I came all that, that way to just see the inside. I mean, I took a taxi mm. from the airport. I did the training it was all day, all the time, you know, just exhausted in the, place, the whole time, yeah. exhausted. And I, and oh. I left and I just said, this kind of sucks. Like I was so focused on that one thing that I missed the bigger picture, right? Like who doesn't want to check out Hong Kong? Yeah, so definitely. I, I tell that little story because for me, no matter where we go, I for sure don't want to miss out on contextualizing that place, right? Like I want context. 
I don't just want to find the coolest mushroom of all time. I want to like know about where I found it. So that that's another kind of paradigm that that we operate on, that I mm -hmm. operate on, where I want I want the food, I want the music, I want the people, I want the language, Absolutely. I want the history, I want all that stuff. So we we'll be doing that on every trip. Yep. Working to plan all those things out so that comes together. Now, um, we have four guides for this first trip. So by the way, uh, if you guys haven't checked out uh, the links in the description, the first trip is this July. It'll be the 14th through the 21st. Um, so you, we're going to recommend everybody flies into Veracruz, yep. and then it's a couple hour drive. We'll, we'll be arranging uh, all that. A couple hour drive to Jalapa, hang out, and then you know we're just going to have the time of our lives. So it, it should be very cool. Um, God, why did I bring that up? I was going well, somewhere maybe people want to, maybe people want to come a little early or stay later. Stay in oh, yeah. stay at the time. Should we touch on oh, oh, general overall travel time too, as far as like yes. how long, you know, sure. yeah, yeah. just so people are aware. So, yeah, I think quite a few people, depending upon where they're from. So one guy that's already booked the trip, he's bought his flight. He's flying direct from Dallas into Veracruz. So that's a direct flight. For Don and I, for Natural State, we all, we had one flight into Houston and then Houston to Veracruz. And I, just from looking at things, depending upon what airline you use, you will quite likely go through Houston. Yeah. So I can guarantee you there will be a big chunk of people that are all going to be on that same flight from Houston to Veracruz. And they don't have too many flights each day, we notice. Anyway, yeah. It's pretty limited, like one to two each day. Yes. So, yes. yeah. Yeah, so. Um, but, yeah, that last little flight from Houston to Veracruz is, was, what, like two hours, two and a half? Not even, was it? Yeah, maybe was not that, even. Hour and 45, hour maybe? And 40 somewhere? minutes. Yeah. Somewhere in there, around two hours. Pretty short. Possibly. Yeah, 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 it was. See, for you, your first flight was really short, right? Yeah, yeah. It yeah, was your, see for us our first flight's a little bit longer than the second mm -hmm. so the second yeah. one fell fast that yeah. that last flight though isn't bad and then like you said you've got you know a couple hours from there and, and the scenery changes during the drive so it really like and you're in a new place that couple hours you're you're there you're at the resort you know and and, and ready to go yeah, it was about two and what two and a half hours to to drive like from the airport in veracruz uh directly to the resort and yeah you're like you're in you're at sea level basically or yeah, let's yeah. just say that because you're, you're right on the gulf um mm -hmm. and then as you're driving you're seeing you're seeing um you know sugar cane and you're seeing palm trees and then all of a sudden you're getting up and you're like oh we're starting to see some different things where's the sugar cane well we've just how many thousand feet in elevation did we just you know uh, right. uh, rise and then by the time you get up to the place it's like you're in a different world it yeah. is it's truly Very such a unique uh, such a unique area. And actually that's such a great thing too, because you know, you're up in these mountains. Um, hey, if it's, if it's dry up the mountain, we go down the mountain, right? If it's right. something's not happening here, we go here. Um, yeah. There there's, and that's why there's so much biodiversity there too, is just in a short span of, of mileage, you can, you can raise an elevation or lower an elevation like significantly. Yeah. Um, and then you still have these pockets of, just beautiful fields and, and, you know, and, and, and almost like plains looking, but you're still up in the mountains and you right. know that you, even down from there, there's, there's a couple thousand feet more to go. So yeah, it's my like, favorite parts are the cow pastures and how they've got the like trenches cut in mm -hmm. this. I love, it's just visually. It's just, yeah. yeah. It's stunning. Yeah. It is. No one's going to hate it. I can tell you that. So, yeah. So as far as coming in, we're, we're going to recommend you go through, uh, you land in Veracruz. Um, some people will, will maybe have to go through Mexico city. Um, I think, I think natural state you did the first time, right? I like, did. I did. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's a little more hectic of an airport, but, uh, there's a lot more English speaking, uh, folks in, in Mexico city than there are, you know, in Veracruz proper. Um, so, so that was helpful. It, it was, it was relatively easy to navigate. Um, you know, <clears throat> so yeah, it shouldn't, shouldn't be an issue for anyone that is coming through there. And you hopped the bus, right? From I right did, Yeah. Then I took the bus back, um, because I flew out the night before you guys. So I took the bus from, uh, from Coatepec or from Jalapa 
to uh to to Veracruz proper and yeah that was like a it's like a two hour bus ride the buses are very nice i mean they're yeah they're like mercedes benz motor coaches right they're yeah. really nice i mean like you've got a t private tv they give you headphones they give you a bottle of water or soda when you board like it's it's real nice uh and, and very inexpensive um you know so oh yeah. yeah it wasn't even 20 bucks was it, it was like nothing but it, not now, even. now with that said we are going to make the attempt um to to shuttle to to, to shuttle you guys so we're, yeah. we're getting there a little bit early you know we got to work with the local guides we got to recheck things I, i'm telling you guys it's going to be as perfect as we can possibly get it so we're going to be there a little early doing some homework making sure everything's dialed in and looking good um so then on the 14th uh, nobody is probably going to get in before noon, um, so we'll we'll just be cruising down there uh, and, and arranging a nice little caravan to to get everybody back to the hotel and uh, go from there. So, yeah, that that should be pretty smooth. Cause cause one of the things for me, and this goes along with uh, Don's talking about uh, safety. You know, there are some people that probably want to go on the trip and they're sitting back going, yeah, I mean Mexico by myself, it doesn't seem safe. I can tell you, I, I can, I, yeah. And even Don King and I, like we, we, we went together just cause we thought, well, I mean, if you have a choice between going by yourself with somebody, of course you want to go with somebody. Sure. So, yeah. So we did, but I can tell you right now, I feel equally safe down there at all times as I do in my quaint little, you know, suburban yeah. Ohio life. So, uh, in fact, we were in a market in Jalapa and I dropped a big bill. Uh, it was pesos, but a, a big, pretty big bill. Yeah. Um, it was like 200. Be, yeah. It'd be like finding, it'd be like finding a lot of money on the ground and some random dude picked it up, chased me down, tapped me on the shoulder. He didn't speak any English and just was like, here, here's your money. You dropped it. And I'm just like, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Don't know if anybody would have done that even no. where I'm from. No, right. most so, most places yeah. in the U.S. that would yeah. not happen. Yeah, that's right. Yes. No, so, it's very. Everybody's very welcoming and and uh, seems very like hum humble kind of vibe to it. You know, everybody's just going about their daily lives. Yes. It's, I mean, yeah, yeah. it's it, and it, and it's really neat to see those parallels too. That you know they're mm -hmm. just going about their daily lives like we go about our daily lives it's just you know it's a different set and setting different language and it's yeah. cool to experience that there are differences of course but you know it's uh, good good differences it's yeah. it's uh it's it's very fun the food for me is is uh should we touch on that <laughs> do it you start so just so you guys know oh. i'm the least gastronomically qualified here um, I like to eat good food. Um, Don King is absolutely, you know, basically like a gourmet chef. Yeah, he's yeah. he's an expert mushroom cooker, if that's the word. I don't know. And the natural state is quite a, I mean, he knows about food I never even heard of. And I thought I heard about all the food. So, yeah, why don't you two talk a little bit about, um, yeah, the food and what we're going to do. And, and you I know, mean. What, well, you know, I would say we've worked really hard to cater to everyone, the, the traditional food of the area or something, something as of a take on that, right? Even if it's like at, at the hotel we're staying, it is, it is nice. It's a nice, nice eco resort. And so some of the dishes they may have might be a slight bit more upscale than what we'll eat when we're out and about, I would say. Would you agree with that, Don? Absolutely. Yeah. It's like, it's like. Yeah, it's, it's it's like sort of like the gourmet version of the thing. Um, yeah, yeah, because exactly. it's a, you know, like this is so the the hotel has a restaurant. Um, this is where people from town go to eat, and they, you know, they're they're eating the kind of um, the traditional sort of Mexican street food or whatever probably all the time, and so they do come to this this restaurant just to get something a little different, right? To like get something a little upscale, um, and actually to the to that point, we had to really, we, we kind of really had to communicate to the hotel that, um, yeah, no, we don't want the chicken cordon bleu. You know, we don't, we, I, we don't I, I know people ball. down there probably they, that blows them away. Like, no, we want the stuff that you would get here. Um, and so they, the menu, like when, when we looked over that menu, I was like, this is it. This, this is, this is what it needs to be. Um, but then it's not only that, but you know, our lunches, uh, 
you know, we're going to be out, out and about hiking. We're not going to be having lunch back at the, at the, at the hotel. So we're going to be getting like local stuff, um, yeah. you know, from the markets, from these places that we've been. And That's I so good. Oh my, I mean, I can't even just like thinking about all the food, all the just amazing, uh. simple, but like literally mouth watering food that we had just on the street or in that, that one mar big oh, market. The market was just, I, I think about that market every day. Dude, every I'm not, not going to lie. Every, every, every time, time I go to Chipotle, I just cry a tear yeah. falls down oh. my cheek. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so like, part of me, you know, I don't know what I'm excited about more is it exposing <laughs> people to like the mushrooms and all that, or the food. Like I'm culture. so excited. Yeah. For people yes. to come down here and taste this amazing food, um, yeah. that again th we're still talking about it now. Like it's it's yeah, yeah it's gonna it's gonna blow you away. Meat um, for days. I mean, you guys are never gonna go to Taco Bell again. Let me just tell you. Yeah, yeah. it's. I yeah. mean, unless you know, if the Mexican pizza is on sale, I get it. But right. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it's gotcha. It, yeah, it, it's it's pretty phenomenal. I mean, I thought I had some great Mexican food. I lived in L.A. I mean it's 50 percent, you know hispanic uh heritage population there i still especially in our, our our planning trip i went to places that set the pretty much set the precedent for me so yeah man the, they take their food seriously there yeah. which is perfect yeah they do they're a foodie like me we yeah. all ate oh sorry go ahead. go ahead i was gonna say one of our guides so we have four local guides um, three of them are Mexicans and one is an expat that's been living down in Jalapa for about three years. And, uh, the expat, he, he's a, he's kind of like us. He's obsessed with the Veracruzano vibe, you know, of the food down there. So yes. he, he worked very closely with us to negotiate with a hotel so that we could, you know, just really sweeten the deal for this hotel, right? It's, it's a fancy hotel. They do a lot of local, uh, business and stuff like that so for them it's cool to to do right what's exotic which is like americanized mexican yeah. food so we were like we gotta get rid of all that we, mm -hmm. we so everything that's going to be served is authentic mexican food uh quite a bit of it is going to be representative of the specific region that we're in so yeah the food is going to be on point not, no one's gonna complain about the food. I can tell you right now that oh. that one's uh, guaranteed or your money back type of thing. The food is unbelievable. Lots of mole, and it's oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That region really does mole well. Yeah, yeah. My um, and the coffee too. It's it's known for its coffee. That region as well. Did we touch on that? Yeah, we uh, very very lightly. So let's touch on that next. So, um, so yeah, this mountain right. The, it's a basically. Cofra uh, de Parote. It's uh, this huge mountain that on one side of it has this massive kind of coffee industry built around it. Yeah. And also one, one thing that's going on is they have worked the strains of which which coffee was it? It was, you say? do you remember Don? Uh, Indica. Ar no. Arabica. Oh, Arabica. Arabica. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was the other place we went. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it was Arabica, Arabica. And, and some other that they planted in order to one, like when the bugs drink, the bugs are hooked on the sap of one of them. And then when they drink the other one, it kills them. So like it's, it's there to, it was interesting. It was fascinating. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so we definitely, uh, a priority. The coffee is so good. there, so unbelievably good. Oh, they were like, we are not going here without taking everybody to a coffee plantation. We're going to give them the tour. They're going to learn about what makes it so special. They're going to watch how it's processed. And then at the end, right, you know, exit through the museum kind of a thing. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're gonna, you're going to get a tasting yeah, and, and then a, a chance to buy a bunch of coffee beans. And there's so, a cafe where if you want to buy a full size yeah. beverage or, or snack or what, I think they had pastries and stuff yeah. in there maybe too. Yep. Uh, yeah, so, so we're doing that one day that that'll be really fun. That's about half the day. Um, what are so, Oh, and then so so as far as people who are really interested in exactly what kind of mushrooms we're going to be looking for and what and all that. Um, we got a couple trips that are going to be skewed more towards high altitude hiking. Um, and those mushrooms, it is less likely that you will find active mushrooms at higher altitudes. 
but you will find a plethora of, I mean, just everything. Bolites, Amanitas, uh, Hyphaloma, uh, Entolomas. That I was mean, what just, we just kind of every, just kind of I I mean I'm just drawing a blank. It's just mm -hmm. every everything. So all yeah. the forest mushrooms, a lot of you know mycorrhizal mushrooms and stuff. So one of the days we're going to be going with the old Mexican family, and uh, after we get done going to their special little location, um, just outside uh, uh, the the coffee mountain or Cafe de Perote, we're going to go back to their place they're going to cook the food up for us with the mushrooms and, and have lunch with them so we're going to be doing that one day and then the other high altitude hike uh, tentatively speaking will be inside an old uh what what is the term not extinct volcano but uh oh uh dormant dormant volcano yeah, yeah. Dormant that, that basically now has a forest growing inside it so yeah. we're going to go to uh vulcan silo or CEO um and, and do that one day that that should be a, that's will probably be the majority of the day for that should be a cool that, one that, that yeah. trip mm -hmm. yeah yeah one of our mm -hmm. guides strongly said must do this mm -hmm. one this one is so special yeah. um so so we'll be doing that and then the rest of the hikes gonna find actives guys gonna find actives where you know there's just too many psilocybes you're gonna find other things too but we're we're gonna from cow pastures to yep you know, thick woods to just good old cloud forests. Um, we're going to find a lot of stuff. You name it, you're probably going to find it. Find I mean, some some clay that, hillsides for zaps. That's what I was going to say. Zap it's a quorum. You can find them on the roadsides there. You know, I mean, it's just, they're so prevalent. Uh, I mean, yeah, we, we'll, we will definitely be finding plenty. And even at higher altitude, there are some there. They're just, sure. you know, maybe, maybe ones that, that are, you know, not as common. Um, yeah. 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 So for, for people who don't know, I feel like a good number of people will know this, but you know, the, the cow pastures have a handful of uh, species that we'll likely find there. And, and then some of the more forested areas will, will have a lot of the others. And, and then like natural state just said, sometimes you can just be riding along the side of the road and go, wait, was that a mushroom? You pull over and you're like, Oh, what do you know? Yeah. It's exactly what we wanted to find. There it is. Great. <laughs> On your way to your destination. Yeah. 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 So, uh, uh, Bruce, the shroom just asked, how do you get your samples and spores home? So that, Great question. this, this kind of leads into a whole nother section I want to talk about. So first off, so we are responsible eco tourist <clears throat> business. We will not be harvesting any red listed mushrooms. Hymei, Neohalapensis, uh, I think Fagicula. Um, we'll, we'll be doing a workshop all on what that means, but basically the cloud forests of the world are endangered. Uh, lumber companies love to come in and just, you know, clear cut them. They, they buy the land for cheap off of some family that doesn't know how to make money off the land anymore and buy by cloud forests. Yeah. And that's so, something we've educated ourselves more on and yes. learned more on since our first trip to the area yes, it, yes it's been impactful yeah. yeah so we didn't know first trip we picked a couple so you know we we when you know better you do better so now that we know so we'll be talking about that um but don't you worry there's still plenty of actives that are absolutely oh. pickable but yeah. when we find the red listed ones they're special we're going to take photos about them we're going to we're of them we're going to talk about them we're you know we're going to make sure we take the time to collectively as a group go over what we know about them right we're we're gonna everything's gonna be a teaching point and education everything everybody is gonna learn it's not gonna be um oh look i found this mushroom i'm gonna pick it real quick and put it in my pocket <laughs> not tell anybody about it it's not gonna be like that this this is a trip for all you guys a team effort this is yeah. not a trip for me this is not a trip for don this is not a trip for natural state it's a trip for the people who sign up to go on this trip. So that's a, a very important uh, point that I think I did not specifically make before. But that so, said, yeah. how are they getting them home? So yeah, yes. back, to, back to the original question. They're legal. Spores are legal. Yeah. You can legally travel through an airport with spores, Bruce, to answer your question. Yeah. That's the long and short of it. Yeah. So, so you, we'll, we have, we'll have it set up to print stuff uh, for yeah. things that people do collect. Um, we're going to have dehydrator there so people can dehydrate fruit. Um, 
Obviously, non-active species are completely fine. A single sample of an active species that's used for mycological purposes, uh, everybody gets to make their own decisions on that one. Um, but I, I th believe all three of us traveled with with dried specimens and it, it was not an issue. So um, not telling you what to do. If you don't want to bring them home, if you're not comfortable with it, no big deal. There's going to be spores. We're also going to have uh, some of the local guides know people who can get you, you know, say we didn't find the species that you really wanted. We, we will have people who can get you local prints, you know, yep. pretty recently. So, yep. Yep. So that that's all done. Uh, we got that all set up. Also, this is a good time to get into the evening. So after dinner, yeah. after we've hiked all day, we have a great dinner. And, and we just want to, uh, you know, what are we going to do with the nighttime? So above the restaurant, there is an open air uh, lecture area. It's stunning. It's gorgeous. It uh, overlooks this geez. valley that, that the hotel is in. So we're going to get to go up there. We're going to have workshops or lectures most nights, not all nights. And we're going to be doing microscopy work. We're going to be doing uh, some, some workshops on breeding and some you know more advanced cultivation practice uh that will all be we're sort of slotting that in tentatively right now but once we've booked the trip out then we will be canvassing everybody who comes to find out what do they want to learn the most about what do they want to spend time with others on yeah and so it'll be catered to the people actually going on the trip yeah once we get it booked up a little more i think we're, we're starting a group chat and we'll, we'll yeah we'll yeah. be canvassing them on on quite a few topics right as far as oh yeah you know yeah um we really do want this to be a catered experience um yeah. you know it's 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 a special place and and we think it deserves to be enjoyed that way <laughs> um yeah yeah and just simple things like you know so at the end of every night after we've had dinner and we're all hanging out, right? We're going to be coming around. We're going to find out what everybody thinks. How's it going? What are you liking? Do you got any any concerns so far? We're going to be attentive hosts. We want everybody, I mean everybody, to be as happy as we can possibly make them. Within reason. <laughs> Legal and not getting me divorced, if you know what I'm saying, guys. <laughs> right? so, so, yes, we want to keep everybody happy. Uh, yeah. But we, we want there to be some freedom. So we're, we're truly on each trip. We believe, at least I believe, every trip. So if we go if we go back to Jalapa once a year for the next 10 years, every single trip is going to be a little bit different. Yeah. The dynamic of the people is going to be a little bit different. The needs of the people, the wants of, of the travelers are going to be a little bit different because we're going to listen to those wants and needs and try to, you know, every possible way we can make you happy, we're going to do it. Yep. And like... Uh, Bruce just said, if you've not tried mole, you're missing out. Yeah, mole, oh, mole, mole. It's so Man, good. oh man. That yeah, it is. And that mole is especially, Don, yeah. Don may be able to tell a little story about transporting mole home, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I was on a mole uh, mission and um, stopped at a couple different, just like, you know, basically just people's houses. They were just selling other <laughs> things like, like Coke. <laughs> Well, you know, Coke, Coca Cola, Coca Cola, Coca -Cola guys. Um, Coca -Cola. Who knows? Maybe well, that that'll too. be the but Columbia trip. Yeah, Columbia yeah, trip. yeah. But I bought a couple different kinds of homemade mole, and I'm like, I need to get this home. Uh, wrapped it up in as many bags as I could. Uh, it still leaked out and in, into my luggage, uh, but uh, so the luggage smells amazing. But uh, yeah, and I still have. I popped it in the freezer. We just take it out every once in a while make some amazing mole so yeah it's just this it's this sauce that like you can get little cans of it little jars of it or whatever but they it's like a it's a labor of love it's like something that uh they spend hours and hours with all these spices and there's chocolate in it and it's it's spicy and earthy and a little sweet and it's on it's on the you know you'll you, you'll it's it's on the the trout that's that's from up the street it's on this it's on the chicken you know the, the next day um vacuum seal yeah Ooh. if i had if a vacuum only sealer, we had one if only if only I mean, y'all could have seen the bag i still can't believe he took it home i didn't know he took it home what yeah just the bag you took that mole oh a mole uh, yeah, yeah no, i didn't it was i just, didn't go yeah. i was just gonna say i didn't figure you could get it through 
TSA with was yeah it? yeah they didn't they didn't care about that uh, they, they weren't looking for mole yeah they could yeah. smell it I'm sure but they weren't looking for it I just yeah. figured with the amount of like if they consider that liquid you know like, right yeah weird man they're so weird about that they're picky about certain things and not others mm -hmm. yeah uh yeah 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 but yeah that's definitely uh that that's an experience and and from what we've gathered the mole recipes are different by region right and that's most things there it differs right. a little bit per region and even by family like uh, yeah. the two the two i got taste totally different and they were just like right down the street um wow. you know sort of like you know i'm i'm italian so it's sort of like even my family we make our spaghetti sauce totally different right our pasta sauce like of course, mine has mushrooms in it. No one else right. does. Like mine's a little spicy and thick. Everyone, other people's are sweet and maybe thin. You know, it's just like it's personal preference, which is also amazing because it, it just it just it just forces you to want to try different places and to stop. At, you know, well, I had this place. You know, I had had lunch here, but how about lunch there tomorrow? It's going to be totally different, even if I get the same thing. Yep. Well, like the ice cream, right? Like we've had ice cream at three oh, yeah. different places there now, and every time it's been amazing, but different, right? Like it's all, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. it's just yeah, the guys, variety. You, you go there, the agua frescas, the, all the different juices. Yeah, You're like, oh, what's this? And they say it, and you're like, oh, I, I don't know what that is. And then they show you a picture of the fruit, and you're like, I still don't still, know what that is. But still here unsure. we go. It tastes delicious. so good. Yep. Yeah, so many cool. fruits. The, just yeah. yeah if you are a fruit person like it, it's i mean think obviously things you're, you're never going to see here um or see in the united states um you know a lot of these things are ephemeral they don't they don't they don't uh ship well they don't yeah. store well yeah. so it's like it's there and that's it like that's where you, that's where you're going to find it um, and you're getting to eat it in the woods right or, or wherever yeah. we're at which is so cool right. getting to pick something off a tree and just eat it or like tasting bro. coffee beans was oh my bro, god do you remember yeah. that first i think it was like the literal first day of our our mexico trip and uh somebody was like oh yeah you can eat these berries everybody just starts picking them off eating the berries and mm. i'm sitting back i tried one but i'm sitting back going Boy, we're really trusting these people because yeah. <laughs> uh yeah, we all just ate a random ass berry we never saw or heard of in our entire lives. <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot of that. So, you know, if you guys are um concerned about Montezuma's revenge and all that kind of stuff, I mean don't rule number one is don't drink the water. Don't drink the water. You just it, don't drink the water. If they have it's water really in a container, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> you're, yeah, you're good. We we will ensure that there is plenty of uh potable water at all times. Yeah. Oh yes. yeah, we we actually made a point of requesting numerous water stands at the hotel just so And we'll have extra on top of that. There's yeah. going to be ample clean drinking water. Um but yeah, just something to know when people are out and about. <laughs> yeah. Don't drink it. <laughs> Do not drink it. Don't, don't risk. It. The locals don't even drink it. So I mean we yeah. have drank uh mountain spring water from a hose and that yes. you know, it's varied results on that, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah so, results. so here's what they mean by varied results so we were we were trying to meet up with uh somebody for one of the hikes we needed clearance to to go on the land so we 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 go to meet with this woman and on the way back uh we're just super thirsty the hike was longer than we thought it was going to be it was way more brutal than we thought it was going to be we went the wrong way we went on like an hour of it she was like, oh, no one goes that way because it's awful. And we did. <laughs> yeah. And anyway, awful. on the way back, there's like this little Mexican kid on a horse. He's got a little farm area and there's a hose. It's got water coming out of it. And we go talk to him and he says, oh, yeah, you know, that's like mountain spring water. You can drink it. So we all fill up our water bottles. We all drink it. Well, old geeky, I was just... I was feeling a cramp coming on. So I'm like, I'm going to slam one, one jug of water and then refill it up again. So I fill it up. I drink the rest of that one. So I had about twice the water everybody else did. Let's just say I, I took a little souvenir home. <laughs> that, yeah. So, mm -hmm. so yes. Be, it happens. Yeah. It happens. You, 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 avoid the water. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's real simple. Yes. Um, so yeah, guys. Um, I am excited. Uh, so as far as the rooms go, do, uh, we got, I think we have 14 rooms. Uh, no, I'm sorry. We have seven rooms that are uh, two twin beds. So everybody 
almost <clears throat> everybody or a good chunk of people will be sharing a room with one other person. We're, if at all possible, we are going to facilitate everyone getting to know one another prior yeah, to the trip. That's big for us. If you got a friend you want to go with, of course, that can be your roommate. Yeah. So we're going to be extremely accommodating as far as that goes to figure all that stuff out. We have six king bedrooms that, that we'll be reserving initially for couples. Um, if, if couples, uh, you know, if we only get so many couples and we have an extra room, we'll open that room up to, to singles as well. Um, so we got all the prices on the website. They start at $23.99. That includes everything except for your flight to get there. Uh, it doesn't include the, if you maybe want to buy travel insurance or something like that. But basically once you are, once you land in Veracruz, we got you, yep. you know, in, until you leave. Um, I do want to bring up one thing. Uh, somebody who already bought the ticket, she bought her, uh, um, her, her flights and all that. She was looking at flights and said, you know, for the, the last day, for the day we leave, I'm just looking time-wise. I think, I think I want to, I don't want to be rushed that last day. <clears throat> so I talked with her and she was like, so I'm, I'm going to leave a day late. I think I'm going to get in a day early, leave a day late. So I'm not rushed so that, that you can totally do. Hotels and Airbnbs in Veracruz are insanely cheap. Yeah, we have an excellent um, Airbnb in Veracruz that yeah. we can recommend. It's yeah, we, we stayed at a three-bedroom condo with a pool and a just insane, really nice place. I yeah. think it was like 140 bucks out the door. So, yeah, it was. You know, cheap. Yeah. So if you want a hotel room, cheap. If you really want to be cheap and you want an experience, there's a hostel there that costs about six bucks. Yeah. Um, there's no air conditioning in that though. <laughs> so anyway, you got six bucks to 140 bucks. You can <clears throat> re that's the, really that's afford the range. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yeah. So, um, and then I have a friend who's thinking about coming um, and then <clears throat> staying longer, you know, so these are all options. The hotel, if, if you want to get in a day or two early, that's cool. We, we, they usually we have some work. vacancy too, where I think, you know, if so, yeah, if somebody did want to like, you know, DM us. If somebody yeah. wants, yep. has, has already booked and they're like, "Hey, we want to book some additional days," we can probably make that make that happen. Yep. Make available. sure you get the same room, probably, so you don't have to yeah, switch we, around. Yeah, we can make it yeah. slick. Yeah, totally we, doable. Because once you've traveled all the way there, right? Like you're there. If right. you have the extra time to enjoy some more of it, you know, exactly. It's, it's a hard place to leave. We all, I think, we all find ourselves wanting to go back. <laughs> yeah. Only every day. <laughs> yes. um all right so i i i think i think we're doing pretty good here uh if anybody in the live chat uh has any questions uh i can definitely address those um you know again for people with medical concerns um i'm i'm your nurse don't you worry guys we'll we'll, we'll take good care of you uh we we will be on any of those things if your doctor has advised you not to hike anymore Probably not the trip. Probably not the trip. Although, I mean, there's, you, you know, we could, we could still talk to you, but, but yes, you, you need to be, um, I had somebody ask me who booked the trip and, uh, they were like, so like, what kind of shape do I need to be in? I was like, well, just start walking. If you can walk two to five miles, you're good. You know, there, there might be a hike or two that'll push your, your limit a little bit, but you'll be fine. So, um, yeah, you, you don't have to be. You don't have to be a, a marathon runner. You don't have to be in peak fitness. Um, you just need to be able, you know, if you can walk five miles, you got it. You'll, you'll be well, good. And and to reiterate, the grounds that the that that we're staying on are are pretty pretty large. It's a pretty vast space. Um, there's a pretty flat like trail. It's an old road that that used to be a main road that no longer is that can be explored. I believe that's yeah. that's very easily walkable um you know there's again there's a pool there's a hot tub there's spa services so like you said there there is stuff to do there and it's a right. beautiful place the, the weather's great so you know by all means if somebody just really wants to go or, or again uh, like you said a spouse that, that's a great right. you know it's 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 definitely there there's no drawbacks to the Right. To, to, to be yeah. and if you if you decide to like one day like you just want to sit back at the resort and hang out at the pool yep. and do the spa and just 
you know, just do your own thing. Um, take a taxi to town if you're adventurous and, and, and do that. Like, that's fine. Like we're, we're also, we don't want people to feel like obligated, like, Oh my gosh, I have to go on this hike. Like there, you know, we, you don't, you know, do your own thing. If, if you're, if your thing is chilling out by yourself and then hanging out at night for these uh, presentations or just hanging out with everybody to, to have dinner, that's fine too. You know, like, do, yeah, do you for yeah. sure. And for that most strenuous hike that we've got planned, I think, like you mentioned, but just to touch on again, we will, we'll have a backup option that day where, you know, uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a very strenuous hike. So it's so it's probably something yeah. that we'll have a portion of people go on and you know. And I yeah, believe we're like working ourselves up to it's, that. It's it's right? a lot. I'm 47. I'm not in the best. I used to be in great shape. Not in great shape. I got three kids. I like to eat food. I could do it, but it you know it's it just like this other hike we went on. Like it takes it out of you. So you, you got to oh, decide you know if you want to do that or not is it amazing yes it's amazing is it worth it 100 percent? the next day will you maybe want to take half the day off perhaps yes <laughs> maybe. I re- we we all felt that way i would say like the almost the entire group the next day on, on the trip we went the next day people were just like even the youngsters were yeah pretty chill we were all like, feeling it yeah everybody's yeah. feeling that one so yeah but we, we, we'll be probably doing a royal seiko um, we'll, we'll be doing something that's like more rolling hills, uh, a lot more chill, a chance to find pans, cubes, Mexicana, et cetera. Um, so which is so fun exploring the oh, pans God, and stuff. The cow pastures stuff. are super fun. Amazing. Yes. yes. And yeah. just hanging out with those Mexican um, skinny ass bony cows is. Yeah. <laughs> They're real chill. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And like, uh, my buddy, uh, Rich just said. Yeah, that you're you're at a bit of and you're not like at eight thousand feet, but you know you're you're a little bit higher up. So yeah, yeah it takes a little. You feel a little bit. Yeah. Yes, the altitude will definitely for people who aren't used to any altitude or who haven't traveled to higher altitude places a lot. Yeah, that might take them a day or two to to kind of get their get their breath back. You know, uh, I didn't notice any really other than ears popping. I, I grew up going to fairly high altitude places regularly, but. Did y'all notice any sort of? I didn't. I mean, so yeah, when nothing. I lived in LA, we go to Big Bear, and like the first <laughs> thirty minutes of skiing, I definitely felt we were at like seven, eight thousand, nine thousand feet, whatever we're at. I forget. Um, I think this is this is right around four thousand, five thousand feet. Yeah, it's not that um, high. Yeah, that's like kind of at the city level. But then once you start actually hiking up, you could be six, maybe. You know, I think the that, high altitudes will, will be nine or 10,000 feet, I believe. So that, that day, everyone will feel it a little bit, but that's also not going to be a hard hike. That's a very, very pretty flat hike. So pretty chill. Yeah. Drink a lot of water. That's all. Yeah. You know, like, yeah exactly. and, um, That'll be the big thing. Yeah. And, and for people that book, just so you know, so I've had a few people that have already booked and they got a hundred million questions for me. <laughs> So once we got a good chunk of you guys together, we're going to have, you, you know, a, a main group, whether it's Facebook, WhatsApp, we'll, we'll figure it out. And we're going to start doing, you know, there, there's more to it. Right now we're just getting getting it sold, and then we're going to start going in some of the details. We're going to yeah. have, you know, things you should pack, the type of clothes you should wear, um, what's optional, what's mandatory. We'll, we'll go through all that stuff to make sure everybody's not, you know, God dang it. Why didn't you tell me I needed this or, you know, one uh, thing we may ought to touch on real quick is, is passports. If, if, if you're thinking about going check, check the date on your passport. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes. If so you have one, make on sure it's not expired. Yeah. Make sure my wife not, had that problem. Yeah. yeah. Well, and if you need to renew it, now's the time, go ahead and yeah. do it. You know, if you want to have some time, that's why we're going ahead and announcing this, you know, a few months beforehand is yeah. so that people have time to get their ducks in a row for that kind of stuff um yeah and if you live by a big city i believe you can like go right to an office and and there's a way to spend a couple bucks and expedite it yes Um, when i got mine i i think i went down to the local library um Mm -hmm. i didn't have to do anything they told me what to do it was a no-brainer i get the picture taken six or seven weeks later i had my passport so it it was not too not too bad that's what we did to library so i think i think most libraries provide that service yeah Yeah, because i I don't want to do i don't going through those whole all those forms and where do you what do you write here and what do you have to fill out what don't you have to fill out like just 
last time we do it for it go to your library it's easy but yes if uh so even if you're on the fence let's go get your passport i was talking to somebody who uh is getting his passport for the first time he's going on the trip and uh i said i'm, I'm gonna tell you right now brother you get this passport in your hand and just like a little switch goes off in your head and the <laughs> first time you 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 go and you get that that stamp in it i mean it that in and of itself it's just it's like does something to you and then the first time you're just in another country yeah it's yeah paradigm it's cool. shift yeah, yeah it's just it's very cool so so man guys it's uh it's a chance to be with your people right it, yes. just be with people like you that can talk forever about mushrooms and so, any and the funny thing is i don't think we even talked that much about mushrooms for for three dudes who really love my we did but when we were yeah. just hanging out, right? Like, yeah. It, it, yeah, it just like like we've all talked about it. That 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 for us was a really big draw to want to go back and bring people from our communities, you know, yeah. with us. It was just so so impactful, and yeah, can't I can't say that enough. It was so fun. Yeah, and for for me, I don't I don't know if this was the case for I don't think it's the case for Don. I think it might have been for Natural State. But for me, uh, that Mexico trip and, and the the trips, the couple little trips I did that summer, I had not gone on a trip by myself since getting married and, and having kids. Yes. Yeah, so for, for me, it was a really big deal. And another person who's who's going on the trip, they 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 were like sort of talking to me one day, like I might need some encouragement because I don't know why, but. Like I, this is, I have not gone on a trip without my wife yet. And is something about it feels just weird. And I was like, it does until you're there and yep. then it doesn't feel weird anymore. And it it's doesn't. all good. It doesn't. And even if it does, you got, you got your little screen in your pocket. We'll, we'll, yep. we will have Wi-Fi. You know, you'll yep. be able to, you'll be able to check in and FaceTime and, um, and yes, yeah, so we have, it, it's, it's solid, solid internet there. Yeah. And, and we're going to keep you so occupied. Yeah. I've been talking to a couple, couple people as well who, who are like, you know, married, never been on a trip by themselves. And so, yeah, yeah. We were both in that boat of, uh, and, and yeah, it's, 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 it's excellent. You know, uh, talk, talk to your spouse or some significant other about it. They'll, they'll probably tell you, Hey, you should go. Yo, bring them, bring them. Yeah. Bring them with you. There you go. Yeah, I mean that really, for me early on, there was a handful of couples from my discord that were like, we think we're going to go, but you know, the, sometimes it was the man's usually it was the, the lady who maybe didn't want to just obsessively talk about mushrooms for seven days in a row. And I was like, there's so much to do here. We specifically found a hotel where there are a lot of options. My wife's not going on this trip. But if she was, she would probably be in that pool and riding horses yeah. and getting massages Massage. and facials all, all the time. So, yeah, yeah there, there's a lot to do. The um, Jorge, the the manager of the hotel, he can arrange, you name it, whatever you need. Yeah, You're like, you know, I'm out today. I'm not going to go wherever you guys are going, but I wouldn't mind going to the archaeological museum or the art museum there's a rich art history in Jalapa. There is. um you just you just go tell them that's what you want to do and it'll all work out there's a historical museum there too lot, lots of history in general i think yeah. it's one of the oldest cities and it's not in the region yeah. And, and oh yeah the the archaeological museum has just like some old mayan aztec some cool old stuff so not I'm not hoping for rain. I'm not hoping to get rained out one day. But if we do, I'm honestly probably not going to cry. That's that's one of our, our first go to uh, backup plans. So it rains a lot there and people have to remember rain brings more mushrooms generally. Yeah. Right. So, oh, yeah. If we get there the first day and it's raining, I'm going to be jumping for joy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And it probably will be because when we've been during this season in the past, it literally there's there's a a short rain shower every day yeah. long yeah. enough to get everything good and wet but short yeah. enough to where it doesn't impede your day most days. Mm -hmm. like, yes for sure it's, it's ideal it's yeah it's wonderful yep. all right guys so so michael tracks dot tours uh if you guys have questions uh i have all our links in the description below 
you you can reach out to me natural state or don king Absolutely. on any of our socials to ask us questions um as uh as as everything unfolds and we start getting a better idea of the demographic and the makeup of of the group that's going um we'll we'll be providing more information um i have a few people i've specifically not said who is already going but we have some pretty cool people from the community going already yeah, um do. so we will probably be um you know bringing them on intermittently here to have little moments of going okay so this person's going to announce that they're going that person's going to announce so we'll talk a little bit about why they're going to go and stuff like that you know a little enticement here and there for everybody so needless to say there's going to be about if you count us in the guides there's going to be about 40 people everybody loves mushrooms most of them cultivates mushrooms uh if they don't cultivate they're pretty serious uh field mycologists love id and mushrooms no one's going to go on this trip and not learn quite a bit you're, you're going to learn you're going to fall in love you're going to have fun for me it was it was a transformative experience for a bunch of different reasons it it like re-legitimized for me um right like if you go on this trip and you come home and it didn't do something to you, then you're just like, okay, maybe I don't, maybe I'm just saying I like mushrooms. But, but I, <laughs> for, for me, I came home and I was just like, I don't have a problem. This is my deal. This is my yeah. jam. This is what I love this on every level. Yep. So yeah. yeah. The only question you're going to have when you come home is when can I go back? Yeah. Like, yeah. Or, or, or what's next the question. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, uh, and there, and there will be next, right? Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. So uh, we don't want to talk too much about, uh, some of the other places, but, um, uh, I guess we can say since Don talked about how he's already been to Columbia, already wor working that one out. He also yeah. has a partner who's, who's, who's been there a lot. So, um, Columbia is definitely on the radar. I have like three or four people who've already told me, well, Geeky, I've, I've been to Mexico a lot, but you let me know when you're going to Columbia and I'm on board for that one. So, you know, we're going to try to, we're going to try to have a handful of trips. Some will be more friendly as far as cost. Some will be more friendly because they're closer. Some will be more friendly because they're safer. Obviously, Columbia is just a slightly different level of traveling risk, although all precautions will be taken. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we're gonna try to offer a little bit of something for everybody. Some trips will skew heavy into um, you know, cultivation, actives. Some will skew very heavy to just general foraging. Some will skew heavy to integration, You know, kind of what do we do with these mushrooms? Some might have to do with culinary aspects of, of the mushrooms so yep oh yeah martha we're, we're we're coming to hang out there we go martha's my friend she lives down there uh she's hey, been on the show before uh she's a, a killer mushroom cultivator and educator and she's like columbia's cheap and safe we love it, it. is yep sweet and beautiful and and yeah yep i'm excited so so again to recap for me, this just so completely aligns with what, what I'm really all about with this podcast, bringing people together, forming friendships, linking people up. You know, you come on this trip, you never know. You might, you might come on a trip going, man, I'm just dying to hang out with Geeky for a week. You might go, ah, Geeky's fine, but you know what? This guy, Don King is so cool. Or this guy, Natural State, man, we really clicked. Or, you know, any of the travelers who's going on this trip. Yeah. That's, you just don't even really know who you're going to connect with, but I promise you, you will ma absolutely make a lifelong friend on yeah. one of these trips. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, guys. So, uh, thank you so much for hanging out and talking about what we're up to. Yeah, man. Um, if yeah. anybody has questions, you know, shoot, shoot questions our way. Uh, Don King is still doing, uh, you, you know, a little bit of stuff around the Ohio area. He's got. What else are you doing? You're doing like a culinary thing coming up, right? Well, we have, um, so we have the Ohio uh, Wild Food Fest, which right. is this mm. uh, new venture that I got together with like, I don't know, eight other local kind of foragers and nice. uh, herbalists and all kinds of people. Um, we're having an, an event on May 18th at Punderson, like a little fundraiser. Uh, so you can come out and 
go mushroom hunting with me or take a, a hike with herbalist Leo Wolf. And that's a, that's a real kind of small group, but it's basically a fundraiser for an event in September, September 28th, which is the big Ohio wild food fest, a whole day of just everything, fishing, hunting, foraging. Like it's going to be, it's going to be a pretty fun event. Um, Ohio wild food dot com i believe nice. is the website so you can check that out and again yeah feel free to reach out to me um i'm i'm uh, the mushroom hunter i have that on facebook the mushroom hunter.com is my website you can feel free to reach out ohio wild food fest has its own facebook group and and events you know all the information there too um and of course i'll be at the ohio mushroom festival um and uh, oh there's there's a little ohio mushroom festival on may Fourth, a tiny, a, tiny, a smaller kind of morel foray. I'll be there, um, and then the uh, the the actual festival. I cannot remember what, when that's going to be. I think it's in September, it's, right? I think it's September sometime too. Mm. Um, oh yeah. yeah, don't worry. We'll we'll do an episode. I'm working out with uh, that, working that out with Vint. I want to have him and a few of the guys that put it together on. So we've been talking about doing an episode that just kind of tells a story about how you can just out of the blue decide to host a mushroom festival, have it go incredibly well and turn into, you know, something that's just like a known festival now. Yeah. Well, we, so, we may all three have to be there together then. I think so. Oh, bro, yeah. you got to come up. Yeah. yeah. Plus, yeah. I got to take you see uh, Natural State and I, we like to mountain bike. So I got to take him yes. to uh, Ray's Mountain Bike Park. I got to take him to some of the trails up here. So yeah, yeah maybe we'll get him up here. Yeah. So that's cool. So you're doing that. So the morale, the the wild food, uh, and then the mushroom festival. I will definitely be at the Ohio Mushroom Festival. I was going to be at the Morel Foray, but I might have gotten an invite to do something else that I don't know if I can pass up. Mushroom uh -oh. related, but I don't want to talk about it right now. I, I, I might have told you, but anyway, so if that works out great, that'll be a little bit of content later. Um, and then, uh, right, uh, I, you know what I never said? The mushroom festivals are fun. They're very cool. If you go to a lot of them, they're kind of like the same thing, right? Like you, you, some of the same people are always there. It's kind of the same vibe. I think one of the things that really impacted me so much going to Mexico was it was just like brand new. Just yeah. everything about it was brand new. Every spot, every hike was brand new. Um, well, and even food, when you go culture, back, everything's so like the the architecture there is so old it's just been stacked on top of each other and and it's like the streets are just winding mazes and so every time you go out and about you're probably going to take a slightly different route to go around x y or z right you're going to see different things that you didn't see the day before so it's just yeah, uh, yeah i mean it's very much it's it keeps, you, yeah so one other thing this was something i really want to say that that i didn't even write it down in my notes, but I just, it just hit me. So for me, I think one of my hopes is that simultaneously you go on this trip and you're just like, oh my God, I want to go on the next one. I want to go on the next one. I want to go on the next one. But also I want you to feel like we did such a good job connecting you to the region, the place, giving you a lay of the land, contextualizing it, letting you truly get to know and connect with our local guides that you also would be able to go, yeah, but you know, well, they only go this week, you know, at this time and it's working out that I kind of want to go at this time, but man, because I went on this trip already, I could totally go on this trip by myself. I, I don't need to go with geeky again. I, I don't need to go, you know, with Myco tracks. We yeah. want you to come on more of our trips for sure. Of course. But we also want to empower people to feel like we gave them enough to, you, you know, do, do it themselves too. So. And that's a pretty cool feeling to be able to go, Hey, I could travel to this other country right. by myself. That's it. That's like it. Like you said, it's kind of a milestone in life. Almost. If you haven't done that before, it's a, it's, it's, it's a cool thing. It's nice. Right. All right, guys, we did it. Thank you so much. All right. So guys, again, get at us. If you got any questions, if yeah. you're ready to book book, um, we, we do, we didn't talk about this. I didn't want to get into it, uh, too much. Right now, we just want to figure out, you know, do you want to come? Do you want to, are you cool uh, rooming with somebody else? Do you want your own room? Um, if you are a woman, obviously you will be paired with a female. 
if we end up having an odd number of females, obviously then I guess we'll draw straws and somebody's gonna get a single room, but you know, we're never gonna put a female with a male that they don't know. We're ideally everybody who's rooming with, with somebody is gonna get pretty familiar with that person uh, prior to even going on the trip. Yeah. So we'll get all that set up. There are a couple private villas that we uh, will surely be filling. We, we, we booked the whole place out. We got the whole ho hotel to ourselves. So uh, once we get a little more interest going and people are, you, you know, if you're so inclined and you want to spend more money for something private, uh, you know, a nice little private villa by a gorgeous pond and an orchid trail, you know, we, we can talk about that. So, so let us know. Um, yeah, uh, Phoenix Fire just said, can you post the website in the chat? Um, I, I did a couple times, but yeah, it's all in the description below. Um, but let me add it real quick. Oh, oh I got everybody. it. You got it. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, guys. So yeah. So for those just, uh, if you just showed up July 14th through the 21st, we're going to Jalapa, Mexico, um, in, in the state of Veracruz. It's a nice, cool, uh, little area. It's got cloud for us. We're going to go find a bunch of mushrooms, a lot of actives, a lot of non-actives, we're doing high altitude hikes. We're doing regular, you know, middle altitude hikes. We're going to find all sorts of fun stuff to eat, to study, microscopy, breeding. You're going to go home. You're going to have a good time. You're going to learn a bunch of stuff. You're going to eat some good food. All right. So uh, if I don't have any questions here in the chat, I think we're calling it, guys. We're right about the two-hour mark anyway. This is exciting. Cool. Yeah, man. Yeah, this is, it's, it's nearing and, uh, yeah, just like everybody said, if, if you're, if you're on the fence, we're here to answer any questions that you may have. So please reach out. Um, uh, I mean, what, whatever you may need, if you've got a hesitancy in some area, chances are, if, even if we don't know the answer, we can find it out pretty quickly. So, right. so yeah, we're not going to leave you hanging. Yeah, for sure. All right, guys, thank you so much for uh, chit-chatting with me and letting everybody know what we're up to. Yeah, man. Have Thanks a great again. Spells night. Happy Eclipse Day. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Speaking of that. How, how do we about, miss that? How about that eclipse? Yeah. Huh. I mean, man. Wow. wow. I, I don't know about you guys. I saw a couple partials in my lifetime. Same. And I guess I just didn't realize how much cooler a total eclipse was going to be. Oh, it was insane. Yeah, same. Same um, exact sentiment. I Yeah, we yeah. It, we were like, have we seen one before? And then once we saw it, we were like, nope, never seen that before. Yeah. Man, nope. I'm telling you what, in the middle of it. So, of course, Black Hole Sun is playing in the background. Right. I'm staring at this just amazing once in a lifetime you know astrological event and i'm just sitting there thinking like this is happening tonight we're talking about myco trucks we're gonna start taking people to all these cool spots just something you know it, it it made me feel small and insignificant in the world and yet simultaneously made me feel like and in my small little insignificance we're still gonna have all sorts of fun yeah that it's like a transformative event yeah. that and yes. and so it's so appropriate that we're kind of launching this and, and talking about it today it's perfect yeah it is, yeah, it is pretty neat yeah. that, that, mm -hmm. that it like we had been talking about doing it on this date for a while but i don't think any of us even like were paying attention to the fact that it, it was like yeah a week or two ago <laughs> before yeah. i realized what it was yeah wait a minute yeah. that's the, yeah oh cool oh yeah. that works out yeah path of totality <laughs> yes <laughs> Oh, yeah, Martha. I yes. I, I forgot. I should have, I wanted to give a shout out to, uh, to, uh, Michael geeky here for his amazing work on the website. Oh man. Uh, yeah. So, like, <laughs> and the videos, the, dude, the videos he dude. shot himself with his drill like that. Th that's not stock footage shit on there. Oh, yeah, like, none of that stock those are our own here. photos and videos like that. That resort that you see is the resort we're staying at. Yeah. Like, uh, but uh, yeah, yeah. This just, dude has shout out to shout out to Geeky for for yeah. uh, well, killing the website. Yeah, shout man. out to YouTube for <laughs> teaching me how to do it. I'm a good learner. I, you know, I I, I can I, I can pay attention. But yeah, um, I sent it out to a few people just thinking I was gonna get ripped a new asshole, and now people are like, yeah, I get it. This works great. But now, if anybody checks it out and you do have issues, 
please let me know. You know, I just, I want it to communicate. I want it to answer questions. I want it to, you, you know, make sense. So if you guys do have any feedback, regardless of whether you're going on the trip or not, uh, but you, you got a thought, please let me hear it. I would appreciate it. Um, oh yeah. So somebody just said, um, love the podcast. Can't wait till you guys do some trips in the U S. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so that there is definitely a plan for that because absolutely. I, I have many relatives who just for whatever reason are just like, I am never leaving the country ever again. I just, I'm not going to do it. And to be fair, right. The, the agenda of our, uh, company, the, the, the mission is to take people to hot spots, right? Like cool places to look for mushrooms. And there are plenty in the United States. So yeah. yes, that, that is mm -hmm. definitely on, on the, on the itinerary. All right, guys. Uh, thank you so much. I'll talk to you guys later. All right. Have a good night guys. See you, everybody. See all right, guys, we did it. Wow, Geeky geeky got in under two hours tonight. That's pretty good. Um, yeah, I just want to tell you guys, uh, first off, regardless of whether you're going on this trip or not, whether you go this year, you go next year, you go five years from now, you never go on a trip, I'm still always looking for ways that I can connect with people. Uh, I love meeting all you guys in person. I love seeing real people uh, who believe in the things that I do who love growing mushrooms, who believe that this, if anything's going to save our, our world, our planet, our people, uh, there's a very strong likelihood that uh, psilocybin containing mushrooms are going to play a role in that. Psychedelics are probably going to play a role in that. Um, so yeah, we're, we're going to be out and about. I'm, I'm going to other things this summer besides uh, Mexico. Um, probably not going to a million places, but, you know, going to try to get to a few other places this summer and meet as many of you guys as I can. Um, you guys fuel me, you guys inspire me. So, uh, yeah, just don't, don't feel like, oh crap, I can't go to Mexico. This sucks. There's, there's going to be some other stuff I'm going to be at. I'm definitely going to go to NAMA this year. That's, uh, I think late September, early, I don't know, maybe that's late October. I can't remember now, but anyway, that's up in Pacific Northwest. I'll be up there uh, hanging out with the Michael Mamas and some of the ladies in mycology up there. So that that's happening. Um, but anyway, love you guys. Uh, hope I can't wait to see who who everybody is that's going on this trip. We're gonna be homies. It's gonna be a good time, and uh, you know we're still gonna be every week talking about these mushrooms. You know what I mean? It's gonna be. This, it's not going to stop. It's just going to keep being a good time. So until next week, you know, go grow some mushrooms. Yeah.